Today we're going to talk about 3.6 for Algebra 1. We're going to talk about proportional and non-proportional relationships. So, before I start off with the lesson, the lesson all of a sudden brings back this whole idea of function notation, guys. We talked about function notation, I think, at some point, because we keep on talking about is it a function or not a function, right? And so, just remember, if I want function notation, we can interchange y with f of x, or even a g of x. It doesn't matter. It's just saying that the function is made up of x's. And so, something like we would see now would be something like y equals 2x minus 3. We put it in function notation, function notation would say f of x equals 2x minus 3. Do you guys remember how to use function notation? Like if I say f of 1, what do we do? What, where does the 1 go? In for x. Notice that there should have been f of x. Now I took the x out and put a 1, so what do I do on the other side? Take the x out and place a 1. So f of 1 is equal to 2, because 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3, which is negative 1. So function notation says the value of, av, uh, sorry, the value at 1 is equal to negative 1. That's what it says, okay? So it's not too bad, okay? Now, the rest of it is talking about proportional relationships. I guess that's a little small on the screen. Let me pause it and see if I can make this work for us. Okay, I made it a little bit larger here for us to see. Basically, what we can say is that proportional relationships is a relationship that is proportional is proportional if its equation is the form of y equals kx. Wait a minute. What, what is y equal kx again called? Had a name. What was that name? It's not function notation. Y equals kx. It was a special name to it. We just did this the other day. Direct variation. Thank you. Direct variation, guys. And we made some connections with direct variation. One of those connections was that all direct variation equations will pass through zero, zero. Zero, zero. That's what it says. Guys, we also made a connection that K said it couldn't be zero, but k itself was actually the slope. You guys remember this? k is the constant of proportionality, which is aka the slope. So therefore, if I start here at zero, zero, and I graph y equals 3x, if I have a point, all I need to do is move slope. Go up 3 over 1. Go up 3 over 1, right? So I can keep doing that over and over and over and over, forwards and backwards. I end up forming a straight line. Do you guys remember this? Guys, those were proportional relationships. And again, if I find the difference between these, which is my change in x, would you guys say that's 1 minus 0, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, and 4 minus 3? 1, 1, 1, 1. That's my change in x, guys. Guess what? Do the same thing for my y's. 3 minus 0, 6 minus 3, 9 minus 6, and 12 minus 9. All of these will end up being 3, 3, 3, 3. That's my change in y. What is slope again? No. It's a change in y's over the change in x's. And so, 
change in y over change in x is equal to 3 over 1, which was the slope, which is the k value in this equation. Your mind is blown. Okay? We also talked about, guys, that if x goes up in this situation, y goes up. If x goes down, y goes down. They're directly related. So, let's do a, an example of a prof uh, proportional relationship. So we got a charity pro uh, example here. A professional soccer team is donating money to the local charity for each goal they score. So, as you can see, going across the table, the more goals they score, the more money they donate. What can we assume if they score no goals? They are not donating. They're not going to donate any money. First of all, guys, in part A says graph the data. And then basically from this graph, what kind of pattern can we deduce from this relationship? Okay, so part A. One, two, three, four, five goals. So what can we say here? I'm going to go by 1 on the bottom, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Going on the scale upwards, what do you think we want to go by? Seven, hundreds or seven? I, I can almost say they maybe. Let's go by $75. 150, 225, 300. 375. Guys, 175, 2, 150, 3, 4, and 5, 375. If I connect those all up the straight line, boom. Is that a perfect graph? So we have this graph. But what can we assume by this graph? I mean, we, I think by the table we could also assume some things too. But the more goals, the more money. That's something we can deduce. That means what kind of slope will we have? A positive rise over a positive run creates what kind? A positive slope. So we'll have a positive slope. Now, what else can we see from our graph? Oh, it passes through. It's going to pass through 0, 0. So what kind of equation type is this? It's proportional, a.k.a. it's a direct variation. So therefore, guys, I know it's going to be in this form. So part B says write an equation that will be that relationship. You know it's going to be a y equals kx, where k is the slope. slope. So we could just pick two points and find the slope, or hey, wait a minute. Could I do what I did last problem of doing the change in x's, the change in y's, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, 4 minus 3, 5 minus 4. All of those end up being 1. Do the same thing with change in y. I'll give you a second to try that out on your own. So you should have set up 150 minus 75, 225 minus 150, I'm running out of room, 300 minus 225, 
375 minus 300. Every single one of these is 75. Remember, that's delta y. This was delta x, right? Right. So delta y over delta x is equal to? The change in y was 75 over 1, which equaled our k value. So it's 75. So y equals 75k or 75x. That's part B. Boom. I got a graph. I got an equation. Can I use this equation now to predict the future? Four or five games into the season, they finally hit their 12th goal. How much money are they going to donate, guys? Well, isn't that y equals 75 times 12? And what's 75 times 12? Nine hundred? Nine hundred dollars they will donate. So they will donate nine hundred dollars for the season so far if they get twelve goals. Now I'm gonna bring back what we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. What if I said put that equation in function notation? What would it look like? Function notation. Kathy? Hmm. Bo? Yeah. Function notation, what is it? Max. Y equals fx. No, no, no. We gotta change it. Y is equal to f of x. That's the key. So what are you going to do? Instead of using y, we just place f of x. Guys, this in purple is function notation for the same exact equation you had. That's it. That's all I was asking. Okay guys, but here's the thing, not every problem we encounter will go in a proportional manner. There's going to be a small adjustment. So we have such things called non-proportional relationships. They do not follow y equals kx. Why? Because the graphs do not pass through 0, 0. What we're going to need to do is look for a pattern between the sides in a table. So I'm going to take that table we have already have set up, and we're going to need to figure out there's something going on. I still agree that there's going to be a constant change, which means the slope is still there. And we can figure that out. But we need to figure out an equation in function notation, eventually, of what that change is. So, when I put a 1 in, I get a 3 out. When I put a 2 in, I get a 2 out. If I put a 1 in, I get a 3 in, I get a 1 out. If I put 4, I get 0. So, let's graph this real quick. I think that's easy enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, right? 1, 3, 2, 2. Three one and four zero. Here's your graph. You can definitely see that does that does not go through zero zero. It's still a line though, isn't it? Yes. Which means it should have a slope that's constant, a rate of change. Interesting. 
So if I actually found the rate of change, I'm going to change colors so we can do this again. Two minus one, three minus two, and four minus three. All give us what? What's the change in y's, guys? Or x's, I meant. It's a one. Okay, we got delta x. Now we need delta y. Here we go. 2 minus 3, 1 minus 2, and 0 minus 1. Yeah, it's negative 1, I hear some people saying. So that means delta y over delta x is equal to negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So we have this ideal, guys, that I want to write this. I want to write y equals negative 1x because that would be a directly relationship, a direct relationship. They're proportional, but it's not. It's really close. So let's take a look at that xy table again. If I put in 1, it should be negative 1 times 1, but it has to equal 3. If I put in 2, we said it should be negative 1 times 2, but it should equal 2. I'm going to save, get some room in here. Are we starting to see something happen here? 3. Negative 1 times 3 should give me 1. 4. Negative 1 times 4 will be 0. Here's the thing, guys. We are making this claim that we want to use a direct variation equation. y equals kx. So we set it up that way. But we're finding that they're not matching, are they? Is this column, middle column, matching the outside? This gives me negative 1. That's negative 2. That's negative 3 and negative 4. That's not 3, 2, 1, 0. So here's what I claim. We need to add something. When I say add something, it also could be adding a negative or a positive. What seems to be lacking in every single one of our choices? How do I go from a negative 1 plus something to get to 3? A negative 2, right, plus something to get to a 2. To go from a negative 3 plus the same exact thing to get a 1. Negative 4 plus something to get to 0. What am I adding? 4. So guess what, guys? There's your equation. The equation is top row, negative 1x or negative x plus 4. There's your equation, right here. But does it answer the question it asks? What's the question asking us to do? Put it into function notation, so therefore you will write it what way? Come on, guys. How are we going to write this? Matt? Plus 4. I don't need the 1, but I can put the 1 there if I want. So the answer is f of x equals negative x plus 4. So if I'm given a table, guys, here's my steps. I find the rate of change, a.k.a. the slope. 
I say, hey, I'm going to say, I know this graph does not go through 0, 0, but what if I made it a direct variation equation? Will it work? And we put it as negative 1x, and we found that it doesn't work. So we have to say, hmm, what do we need to add or subtract from the middle to make it work? And it should be consistent, because it's a line. Everything's constant, right? In this case, I needed to add 4 every single time to make it work. So the, guess what? The equation was plus 4 at the end. Guys, ooh, this one's a good one. Because now I want you to take the graph and do it from the graph instead of a table. Hint, guys, make the table. I'll pause it and give you some time. So, what kind of points do we find in our graph? Somebody, somebody name a point that we know for sure is on that graph. 2, 0. Okay. What else? 0, 4? No. 0, 4, 2. Negative 4? Uh, 4, 2? Okay. Any others that we want to add to this? How about 1? 1, negative 2. Okay. Four points is good enough to make sure we got a good uh, system going. Here's the cool thing, guys. I think everyone would agree these are not in order. I agree. They're not in, like, numeral order for x's. But here's the thing that's really kind of cool about this is the fact that it does not matter. I can go out of order. I still can find the change in x and I can find the change in y's. Okay, give me a second here. Okay. Let's find our change in x. These ones, these ones, these ones. 0 minus 2 is? 0 minus 2, negative 2. Ne um, I'll put this off to the side. Is negative 2. 4 minus 0 is? 4. And 1 minus 4 is? Negative 3. Uh, wait a minute, guys. That doesn't even look like it's constant in the axis. Interesting. Okay. We got to do the same thing here, right? Uh, negative 4 minus 0. Negative 4. Uh, 2 minus a negative 4. Oh, add. So it's? 6, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Now, these aren't constant between each and every pair because we're jumping around. We're picking different points in different places. But, guys, I'm going to go into the middle here and say, I need to put a change in y over the change in x, right? So the first set would be negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. 6 over four. Okay guys, we have a correction to make. It's three. Two. Yes, that would make a huge difference. We need to redo our numbers. So, it'd be 3 minus 0, which is 3, and 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So, now I put the 6 over the 3, which equals 2. Now, okay. The slope is constant, guys. We should have kept on getting the same thing. We then also can place negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. So that means I have 2x plus something.
is going to be my equation, right? So now we have to figure out what that adjustment is. We know the slope, so we're going to treat every single one of those x's to the same slope, which means 2 times 2, 2 times 0, uh, 3, no, sorry, 2 times 3, right? And 2 times 1, plus what, plus what, plus what, plus what? What seems to be the missing link to get from 2 times 2, which is 4, to get to a 0? Oh, it should be minus 4? Wait a minute. 2 times 0 is... How do I get to negative 4? Oh, subtract 4. 2 times 3? To get to a, a 6? To get to a 2? Minus 4? Minus 4? Minus 4? The equation... Ladies and gentlemen, it is f of x equals 2x <laughs> minus 4. <laughs> Guys, your homework is page 200, 1 through 3, 23 through 29. Have a great day.